Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Andrew in Omaha, Nebraska. And in this video, I'm going to be making a leather chin strap for a firefighter's helmet. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a uh, exactly what it says it is. It's a chin strap for the helmet. Um, and it makes it so uh, somebody can buck their helmet off, neither hold it to the go over their back and hold it temporarily, or they can buck it forward and make it so they can put on their uh, face mask or take it off easily. And what I've been told is a lot of these uh, helmets that have Velcro on them, they don't do so well in hot environments uh, around fires and things like that. So that's why uh, leather uh, chin straps are so popular uh, with firefighters. And in this uh, one, I'm going to also be adding the uh, firefighter's uh, shield number to it which you'll see here near the end of the video but this uh, strap is going to be made from uh, probably uh, five to or four to five ounce uh, Wicked and Craig uh, English bridal leather and right here I'm uh, it's gonna be uh, three quarters of an inch long and I'm just cutting some test strips here to make sure they fit in my hardware I'm using a postman strap, which I have in my hand right there, and um, or a postman's buckle rather, that I got from Strapworks. And then here, this is a quick release buckle that I get from Weaver Leather. And right now, I'm having to source these two pieces from these two separate companies because I can't find uh, um, a uh, all black uh, postman's uh, clip there. Uh, from Weaver, so that's why I have to get it from the strap works. But I'm gonna take my strap cutter, and I'm gonna cut uh, uh, the three quarter inch strap from my hide here. And as soon as I get it cut here, I'm going to cut it into sections. I need two long pieces, which are 27 inches long. And then I need two short uh, sections, each seven inches long. So I'm double checking my measurements here to make sure the strap is true. And that strap cutter from Strapworks does an excellent job of cutting consistent straps. I have yet to have a problem with it. Now I'm going to be cutting out the seven inch pieces and once I get these pieces test fitted to make sure they fit in all my hardware I'll go ahead and run them through my Cobra class 14 leather splitter in order to take them down to the correct thickness that way I can ultimately go and glue these together with the finished sides facing the out uh, both outsides so there's not going to be any type of um, suede or um, the uh, flesh side it's all finished side on both sides of this project and here I am I uh, running the 27 inch piece through and then I'm going to cut a 27 inch uh, strip here and then I'll cut a slightly longer uh, strip just so I have some extra room to play with when I start gluing these straps together. Now I'm going to be using Wellwood contact cement. Um, I really like this. Um, comes in this glass bottle here. It makes it really easy to apply and you can get this at the local hardware store and uh, I think I'm going to be switching over to this uh, from my barge cement. Um, I've been really happy with it and a lot of other leather, leather crafters use it and really like it. But uh, here I am just uh, throwing the cement here onto each piece, pressing it together and I just have some cheap Harbor Freight leather gloves on. Um, they are well worth uh, the money. Ever since the COVID stuff started, um, the price of leather gloves went way up and they were harder to acquire. So it is kind of a pain getting a hold of leather gloves of all things now. But uh, to keep my hands nice and clean and I don't have to be rolling uh, contact cement off my hands all day long. 
Now I'm just going to cut the ends. I'm going to round off the ends on all the straps. And then I'm going to run them down the uh, belt sander here to true up the sides. And then I use a craft tool fine edge um, beveler to uh, it cut the little uh, frayed ears off that are left from the belt sander. Now what I have here is a craft tool um, corner punch. I really like this. It's it's great for uh, cutting the edges off. I guess I mean I could have used it to uh, do the main piece there that I use the uh, rotary knife on. I'm just showing you know two ways to round off the edges. The rotary knife is substantially less expensive than the uh, corner punch. Now I'm just using 220 sandpaper to uh, start the uh, burnishing process. I have it sanded down with 220. Now I'm going with uh, 400 wet sanding it, just wetting the side of the, le the leather piece as I go. And then I go back over with this uh, um, I just go over it with a, a canvas cloth. It really slicks it up nice and then I hit it with some Phoebe's black uh, leather dye on the edges to get them uh, dyed and then I go back over it with uh, Phoebe's uh, ed edge coat paint. Now I'm using a Cobra Class 3 harness stitcher loaded up with 207 red thread and I also have their new drop down edge guide there installed. That is really nice for uh, holding straps in place and let you move a little bit faster. Um, the machine did skip a stitch there uh, while going down the first run and I'm going to have to uh, stop and fix that which you'll see here shortly. I just run the uh, the first set of stitches over a couple times to lock them down. Now I'm popping that uh, skip stitch here. Sewing machines just do that from time to time. They'll skip a stitch. So I got to back out a couple holes, then burn them down so they don't continue to unravel, and then I got to go back to the machine and repair that uh, section by putting down some fresh stitching. It's kind of a pain in the neck, but it's just part of having a sewing machine. It will happen from time to time. Now I'm just on top of my little granite stone here. Uh, hammering down the stitching, making them flat. And here I'm going to stitch up the uh, seven inch strips. There's basically three main pieces of these um, chin straps, two seven inch pieces and the one 27 inch uh, piece. So I'm going to cut some holes in the ends of the uh, seven inch pieces here and get the hardware on. Now I put some Phoebe's acrylic resiline down and I did this after I stitched uh, uh, stitched up these straps. I recommend before any sewing is done go ahead and put the uh, resiline down first and then put the threads on top because the resiline kind of took some of the some of the brightness out of the thread I thought and so I'm not going to be doing that again. But I'm just using some um, some gunmetal color Chicago screws I got from Weaver and I'm just going to tap down the ends to uh, get the bends to stay. I'm putting the quick release buckle in And then I'm going to put a loop on the other end where the uh, postman's uh, clip is. And I'll also secure that down with the uh, Chicago screw. I like the Chicago screws versus a rivet because at any time that for some reason it needs to come off, 
Um, they can take the screw out and take the hardware off. Now I'm putting the uh, this guy's uh, shield number in. I'm just using a Harbor Freight Arbor Press. And then I'm using Angelus acrylic uh, leather paint for the numbers. I'll put the red down here. And then once the red's down, I'll go back around it and outline it with black to take care of any red that fell down into the crevice of the stamp and helps the uh, number really stand out. i got to be really careful not to touch the uh, thread when I'm doing this. And there you are. There's the uh, chin strap. Not a whole lot to it. It's about 30 inches long altogether. Three quarters of an inch wide. I hope you had fun watching this. This is Andrew in Omaha, Nebraska. Have a nice day.